Ladies and gents, welcome to Dungeons 2, an interesting RTS dungeon simulator developed by Realm Forge Studios. Recently I picked this up thanks to a promotion being run by a Humble Bundle. I had been watching this on Steam for quite some time. As usual it got lost in the ever growing wish list. I picked up the first dungeons on release a fair while back. It claimed to be, and in spirit, a game like Dungeon Keeper. I think I played it for about three hours before I got sick of it, and it was nothing like it claimed to be, not even close for me. Dungeons 2 doesn't claim to be the spiritual successor of anything. However, gameplay wise, it has vastly improved upon the first game. I am currently just under 30 hours played on this title, and while a few bits of the game I am sat around twiddling my thumbs because I am waiting for something to happen, largely it has been a very, very enjoyable experience. Now, this review is largely going to be of a positive nature. I only have one gripe with this game, and I will just get it out of the way now so we can move on to the good stuff. It's not even that much of an issue, but it does annoy me every time I boot the game up. And that's the fact that you have to click login on a bloody launcher and then another button to get into the damn game. Ditch the damn launcher already. When I click play on Steam, I want it to do just that. I don't want to click play and then two other buttons and then sometimes a third is required to bring the game up from the taskbar out of a windowed mode because the launcher thinks it's the dog's nuts. The launcher is terrible just bloody terrible now with that out of the way the good stuff improvements from a glance are things like better dungeon management there's no need to satisfy heroes needs this time around before you kill them a simple case of you see a hero party enter the dungeon throw all your minions at them and pummel them into a fine paste the graphics are very pleasing on the eye animations are quite fluid and the ragdoll physics are very enjoyable to watch when they happen. I found this game very easy to pick up and play with no issue. Uh, introductions into the mechanics are well planned and play out wonderfully. The Hand of Terror can be a little bit clumsy and bothersome to use at times. Picking up things by mistake happens quite often from my personal experience. It does really take some getting used to and even then you might end up picking something up accent like a toolbox in the Tinker's Cave instead of simply clicking the room itself to see what it is actually producing. Like I said earlier, the game does have a pretty weak pacing about it. While heroes do come in waves every, hey I don't day. know, 15 minutes or so, in a high level dungeon later on it does drag a bit. There's not much to build and you're usually just waiting for stuff to be researched. In one of my games, in a skirmish, I decided to leave the game running while I went about doing something else. I was low on gold and I was waiting for toolboxes. Two hours later, I returned to a huge full treasury, all of my minions doing pretty much nothing except working out in the arena. I had no traps at all in my dungeon, just a guard post where the heroes entered my dungeon with a horn built into it. Heroes would enter, horn would sound off, and my minions would simply destroy them. There was nothing they could do to stop it. I left the game running like it for two hours and honestly it was a little bit disappointing to see that the heroes wouldn't try and adapt to this AFK tactic. Now to something else. The narrator. He's a funny bloke and often references other games or other pop culture stuff as he starts rambling. Usually in other games this would get tiresome but in this one it was actually very amusing and you don't hear the same lines over and over. They are generally mixed up quite well. The RTS element comes forward when you attack the heroes in the overworld. While underground it feels very Dungeon Keeper-esque, the overworld plays more like Warcraft 3. The combination of the two genres works here really well and is very well executed. Overall, I have to say, this is what the first dungeons should have been like. Despite the somewhat slow pacing at times, it's still a fantastic game and extremely enjoyable. I would now, quite honestly, love to see the devs from this game and the devs from War from the Overworld join up and give us the real Dungeon Keeper 3 experience we have all craved for so many years. 
Both games have great things about them. I mean, in this game, you finally go to the surface and raid towns and burn them down. Yet you really do lack types of minions, whereas in War for the Overworld, there are plenty of different choices. So, despite getting this for free, thanks to Humble, this game usually retails for around 25 quid. Keep in mind, I have piled 30 hours into this, which has included me finishing the entire single player campaign and a couple of skirmish maps. With how well fleshed out this game is, and also the lack of any real bugs, I would have to say it's worth handing over some cash to play this wonderful title. 25 quid is really a bit steep for a game that is now bordering on two years old, if not just over. Honestly, I would wait for a sale and then grab it. Don't do what I did and wait for two years before playing this, however. It really is a great experience. That will feel quite second nature to players of Dungeon Keeper and War for the Overworld. Well, I have four achievements left to get now. One is online based. Guess I have to check it out and see if it even works. Links to the dev's website and a few links to purchase the game are in the description. I'm off to slap some more snotlings. I think I have issues. I like slapping stuff way too much.